present research entitled Evaluation of the Subjective Well-Being of Southern Cross University Students and its Relationship to Academic Performance was conducted as an honors project within the Bachelor of Naturopathy at Lismore, Southern Cross University, Lismore, Australia. It was conducted by myself under the supervision and guidance of Dr. Cathy Avila and Annette Morgan. Here are the few databases researched uh, for the purpose of the literature review of this thesis. The World Health Organization defines wellness as the optimal state of health of individuals and groups, the realization of an individual's full potential physically, emotionally, psychologically, culturally, educationally, occupationally, financially, environmentally, ethically, existentially, sexually, socially, spiritually and economically. However, despite this definition, there is no universally accepted definition of wellness in the academic literature. This is partly, of course, due to its cross-disciplinary conceptualization and partly due to the subjective nature of the concept. In the current project, well-being and wellness will be used synonymously and interchangeably, as is the case in the majority of recent literature. There were three research questions covered in this project. The first one, how do undergraduate students at Southern Cross University rate their subjective well-being as measured by the Personal Well-being Index? And how is this compared to the, to the Australian Adult Normative Range? The second question, does subjective well-being and lifestyle satisfactions relevant to students affect academic performance in undergraduate students? And third questions, question do health behaviours influence students' GPA? The design of the study, so the study was a cross-sectional study online survey. Um, a Qualtrics interface link was sent in email to all students and participation was anonymous and volunteer, of course. The instrument used for the project was the Personal Wellbeing Index, which is um, developed in Australia, was developed in Australia by Professor Robert Cummins from Deakins University. And it's covering, it's an instrument that covers eight broad domains of well-being. A full de model deconstruction is available on the Australian Centre on Quality of Life, Deakin University. The internal consistency of the instrument was demonstrated by Cron mass alpha coefficient lying between 0.7 and 0.85 in both Australian and international samples. With a remarkable internal stability for the instrument, over the past 12 years more than 20 national surveys were conducted in Australia using the PWI, demonstrating a minimal variation of 3 points in PWI mean. Here are the eight domains included in the PWI, which is standard of living, personal health, achieving in life, personal relationships, personal safety, community connectedness, future security and spirituality. Adding a ninth question, which is of a more general consent, which is uh, how satisfied are you with your life as a whole? The PWI is designed for adults and um, is time efficient, easy to use, it takes only about 5 minutes maximum, and is available in an electronic format. It has not yet been used, up to, up, up to, up to date, it has not been used on specifically university students. The survey also included additional questions four questions on lifestyle satisfactions relevant to students, satisfaction with academic performance, with stress levels, with sleep and with time management, additional demographic questions on academic activity and performance and on health behaviours. Five questions. The 
The Tabachnik and Fiedel equation was used to work out the minimum sample size required for statistical confidence. And with uh, 616 cases uh, for this study, the present study adequately meets the power requirements for all major analysis. There were exclusions for the study. We excluded the postgraduate population. Of course, the GPA was irrelevant to research postgraduates. SPSS revealed in the main less than 5% missing data for all variables, so we decided not to include it in the analysis. How did we measure subjective well-being? The PWI created a composite variable calculated by averaging life satisfaction scores across the eight domains. And all data, data generated was then converted to a standard form, which we named the PWI STD, into units of a 0 to 100 point distribution. The values derived from this process were called percentage of scale maximum. And this was done for the purpose of direct comparability with one another and also, of course, for comparability with other studies using the same instrument. Calculation of GPA equivalent. The grade point average was used as a measure of academic performance. And uh, mean GPA equivalent was calculated on the basis of the grades obtained from for each unit for each student uh, in session 1 for each of the respondents of course in session 1 2011 the GPA was self-reported so therefore and was not validated from university records because access to university records was not available for this study The results. A 616 undergraduate students were included in the analysis out of 833 Southern Cross University responses. The participation rate was 5.2% of the total enrollments. PWI standard score yielded a Kronbach's alpha of 0.883 and a mean of 64.5% scale maximum with a standard deviation of 17.06. There was little evidence of clustering at either the lower or upper extremity of the scale. Comparing the different domains of the PWI, Satisfaction with health and with future security were the lowest domains of well-being for the st uh, studied population and spirituality and personal safety were the highest. For the demographics, um, the correlations are with the subjective well-being only age and relationship status was status was significant, but no other demographic factors were significantly correlated. Pearson's correlation was conducted for subjective well-being as a predictor for GPA. Um, and PWI and the GPA were only weakly correlated with a coefficient of 0 0.171. The strongest relationship of the GPA was with the variable satisfaction with academic performance. A stepwise multiple regression was used to examine the proportion of the variance in GPA as a dependent variable and accounted for firstly by the PWI standard alone and with all four lifestyle satisfaction variables as the first model. In the second model, uh, PWI was taken again with satisfaction with academic performance and satisfaction with time management. This table reports the results, the resulting model two. 
when the PWI is fitted as the sole predictor of GPA, it was found to account for only 2.6% of the variance. Health behaviors impact on academic performance. Only cigarette smoking and alcohol consumption were found to explain a significant proportion of the total variance on academic performance. And when adjusted for the well-being of students, only cigarette smoking remained significant. Other health behaviors um, measured, which were physical exercise, recreational drug use, and practice of meditation, prayer, or relaxation, were non-significant in this study. Limitations for the study was the time lag and timing of the survey. Of course, this was only a cross-sectional study. The questionnaire was available from mid-September to mid-October and um, it was a period of the semester where the students, of course, were quite stressed. It was before, during and after the exam session, but this was the only time available for data collection. For a greater objectivity, of course, we suggest that data collection is preferable, preferable at least twice a year and at different types of times of the academic calendar. Other limitations were self-reported measures in general and mm, in particular to grades. Excessive measurement error due to over-reporting of grades by lower achieving students is a well-known cause that could lead to increased probability of a type 2 error. Other several uh, biases were noticed with a ratio between female and male, ethnicity and um, academic schools representation. We recommend that for further, for further, for, uh, for further studies, direct access to student services databases for GPA and demographic data collection is requested from the Ethics Committee. Discussion of the study. Subjective well-being was scored as 64.5% scale maximum for the undergraduate students from Southern Cross University, which was approximately 10% lower than the Australian adult normative range. That demonstrated a defeat of subjective well-being homeostatic control for this for the studied population, where an active management system for personal well-being should range between 70 and 80 points. Above 75, people feeling good about themselves, well motivated, and st with a strong sense of optimism. While under 70 percent is known that these essential qualities are severely compromised with people at risk of depression. Findings supported the second hypothesis that subjective well-being is a predictor of academic performance. However, um, it accounts for only a small part of the variance. When satisfaction with academic performance was added to the regression model, subjective well-being accounted for 35.5% of the variance. And lastly, for the third hypothesis, the cigarette smoking and alcohol consumption were significant for this study. And when adjusted for PWI, only cigarette smoking remained significant. As a final note, for those interested, a longitudinal study is being conducted at present um, at RMIT Melbourne University at the Masters of Wellness postgraduate degree under the guidance of Professor Mark Cohen on the same subject as is this research project. So measuring well-being in students and looking at the different lifestyle satisfactions and lifestyle habits. These are the references used for the presentation. And thank you for listening.